I decided to prime them in dark umber, similar to what I did in my previous model. It worked really well, and I think it would work in this project too. For the skin color, I took some Bugman Glow and mixed it with a dark umber base coat. I work in very thin layers, so the paint always looks extremely saturated and bright when it's wet, but as it starts drying out, it'll slowly even out. These are also 3D printed models that were gifted to me, so they're not entirely perfect. I decided for their skin to paint them in a very textured manner, creating this idea of that they have imperfect skin that's almost been scratched and has a lot of scars on it. As personally, I can't really imagine that ogres have a particularly good skincare routine. Also given their pirate background and a very violent nature, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that they'll be covered in scars. For this guy's skin color, I went for a more paler color, applying a lot of white to desaturate it. For the pants, I decided to do some freehanding stripes and create this idea of a pattern I think is quite often associated with pirates. For the overall theme, I do want them to look grim dark and match the Mordheim aesthetic. However, given the fact that I'm not sure if they're going to be ogre bodyguards or man-eaters, I'm trying to create this color scheme that will be quite vague and could fit either aesthetic. If I do end up going the route of man-eaters, I have several ideas for what boxes I might pick up, and maybe even kid bash a few options. But if I end up going the route of bodyguards, I think these ogres are essentially perfect as they are, and I'll be able to choose which ones I want for particular missions. Only problem with that is, I'm not sure with whom I want them to match with, and I think mercenaries would probably work the best. I would have to dig into the rules, but it would also be really interesting if I could accompany them with witch hunters or sisters of Sigmar. But back to painting, once I was finished with the rope, I decided to actually grab some of this mahogany and apply that for the leather instead. As the yellow tint from the rope and the yellow tint of the leather belt previously were matching together a little bit too much, and visually blending together and lacking some of the contrast that I really wanted there to be between them. So instead, I slowly mixed in some beast brown and worked my way towards the yellow, so it still has that hint of hue, but the base color is quite different, so visually your eye will be able to distinguish the colors much better. I also thought my skin looked a little bit too rough, so I ended up glazing some of the previous highlight over the flat areas and then re-establishing some of the highlights just to make the muscles also pop out more. For all my metallics, I actually ended up going with non-metallic metal, as using true metallic metals on this miniature did not work at all. The problem was it has these things called layer lines, which was these visual bumps, and when you apply metallic paint over them, they seem to be extremely apparent, creating this very odd texture that just did not match the theme of the model. So I ended up once again trying my best to create non-metallic metal that at least roughly resembled something that looks like metal. I think at this point I definitely have to spend a lot more time learning non-metallic metal as I seem to be gravitating towards it with some of these models. I then used some Gilliman flesh through the airbrush just to smooth out some of the skin. And so came the time to paint the big tuna. At least in my head canon, that's what this thing's gonna be, some sort of a mythical tuna. At first, I tried creating this very pale, scaly aesthetic, but I ended up grabbing some turquoise from Contrast and reapplying this color that I thought worked much better. Then grabbing some Army Painter Speed Paint Grim Black, mixing it with some Flow Improver, and applying over my metallics, as well as the tuna. I also went with a green bandana, but I personally think I sort of went a little bit too hard in the highlights, so I ended up coming back with some of the Speed Paint to dull it down. And so I moved on to the next ogre, for which I decided to paint something similar, but at the same time, go for a different skin tone. These ogres take a really long time to paint, so I did not want to do the exact same thing. I wanted to create as much visual distinction between them, but at the same time make sure that they look similar and they're painted in a style that matches their own aesthetic. I compared them against the other ogre just to make sure the skin color was slightly different, but at the same time, still visually matching. And for this guy, I wanted to introduce a little bit of blue to the model, so I ended up mixing some dark umber with blue paint and created this very interesting turquoise. But I still ended up mixing more blue just to bring out some of it, however I never went to the pure blue, then adding a little bit of white for the highlights. When I was looking at some of the warbands that people have painted, they always have this very colorful aesthetic while also looking quite grim dark. I knew it was going to be something difficult to achieve, but I still wanted to try something similar to that. So I did my best to incorporate a lot of these very bright saturated colors, but at the same time keep the overall aesthetic of the miniature quite grim. For the boots, I originally really wanted them to paint them the classic leather color, however I realized that it would blend in with the pants a little bit too much, so I ended up going with black that I think actually worked really well, and it has this really cool black leather aesthetic. And I painted the pants in the exact same way as the previous ogre, just with a slightly different pattern to it. For the leather belt, I went for the exact same colors as previously, however, I tried to go for a slightly different texture. Whereas the other one had this very smooth, rough texture, this one I wanted to be very scratchy and look like he has been handling this thing around for a very long time. 
Not to mention, it has a lot more heavy things on it, so I'm imagining the leather is getting wrinkled up much more. When this guy gets in a lot of different scraps, some things are probably scratching at him. This was one of the very interesting things of working on such a very big model, is I'm able to implement a lot more tiny details that otherwise would be very difficult to do. As I've never painted ogres previously, I didn't realize just how big they are. At the same time, whoever designed these models did such an amazing job as I felt like painting this guy was an absolute breeze. Due to how easy it was to paint him, I ended up trying a lot harder and put in a lot more details that essentially I was creating myself rather than painting what was already established on the model. It also surprised me that this guy actually had visible fingernails, so I ended up painting those and it gave it a lot more detail that I thought worked really well. For both the ogres, I ended up painting their faces off screen as it was a little bit difficult to have the camera in front of me and also get the model close enough to paint the details. For the bone color, I ended up using the exact same British khaki and just slowly mixing some white into it. These bones do look really creepy and grim dark, however I'm actually not sure why this guy would be keeping so many bones. I presume it's some sort of a snack, but I think having something else would be much more interesting for him. And as I was thinking at it, I realized he actually had a very different snack in his little pack. Try saying that 10 times. For the non-metallic metals, I painted them the exact same way as previously, however I did go a little bit faster this time. For the axe, my original idea was to give it a very rust looking aesthetic, however I quickly realized I don't actually have any idea how to paint rust on a non-metallic axe. My personal little story for this axe is that he might have picked it up somewhere and then as he started using it, the rust is slowly scraping off. As previously, I used some of the speed paint all over the non-metallic metals. I also thought I would add some strawberry jam to his little snack and a pack. After all, who doesn't like strawberry jam, especially on a snack to go? I also began to base my models when I realized I have one more miniature I forgot to paint. Also, after looking about two seconds on this miniature, I quickly realized I am not going to have an easy time with him. Whereas the previous models were actually very plain and allowed me to paint some of the details on him, this guy was the complete opposite. He had armor, trinkets, he was full of stuff. Also, painting on metallic chainmail seemed extremely daunting and would take ages. However, I decided to take a leap of faith and try a very simple idea that I thought would either work really well or backfire extremely hard. I created these very bright highlights and then grabbed some of my wash and went over all of the previous areas. This time making sure it was less diluted and would provide much more contrast. I was also having quite a difficult time distinguishing the details in the model so I ended up actually using the wash over every single area. After the wash was dry, I made sure to varnish the model as it had a very glossy appearance. Also, as I use a lot of flow improver, it does slow down the drying time of the miniature quite a bit. As a result, some of the paint can be reactivated for almost an hour if you apply enough water onto it. Which is most definitely something I did not want. For the skin color, I did my best to mimic the previous models as much as I could as I felt like this would be the biggest way to essentially connect the models visually making sure that even though the models look very different, they still feel like they're living in the exact same world. Perhaps this ogre has actually been a bodyguard for quite some time, so he found himself a very large amount of gear. Maybe he's also slightly different from those ogres and is much more intelligent due to his different diet. It could also be an influential thing where, as he's been hanging out around humans for quite some time, he noticed that having better gear is much more beneficial to him, especially when fighting a large amount of undead that'll be trying to scratch away at your skin. Either way, he definitely feels like he's a higher level than those two. Because the model was actually turning out much darker, I was able to use the original leather the recipe that I really wanted to try. However, he still lacked a little bit of visual interest that I wanted to introduce through these metal plates. So I tried going for a very saturated bright blue that I think actually ended up working amazing. From my understanding, having this very bright colorful armor is actually quite common in the medieval setting as well as low fantasy. For the pants, as well as the fur, I ended up actually using some contrast paint as the original one I did looked far too desaturated and just sort of got lost between all the details. Which was also something I noticed with all the metallics. They did look really cool, however, they were a little bit too dark. So I ended up reintroducing some of the non-metallic metal and creating much more of a contrast between them. For my bases, I wanted to create something that was interesting but also quite grim and depressing for which I went with these very swampy looking aesthetics as well as creating these wet looking puddles, creating this notion that this world is cold, wet, and overall unpleasant. After all, it is the city of the dam. And with that, these awesome ogre man-eaters are finally done. <laughs>
For those wondering, these are the main colors I used. Mixing them in a variety of ways that unfortunately if I included would probably make this video twice as long. 